Hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Nathan, and I'm a partner and the chief talent officer at Deloitte. Today, we have a very interesting topic, and this is on a webinar on the National Education Policy 2020, a game changer for Telangana. And I believe that the distinguished members of the panel who are as under, Dr. Mahinder Reddy, who is the Vice Chancellor of IFI Foundation for Higher Education, Professor Venkata Ramana Rao, Venkata Ramana, Vice Chairman Telangana State Council of Higher Education, Ms. Sangeeta Punnappa, Associate Vice President Talent Acquisition, SLK Software, Ms. Sai Spandana, student, Harrisburg University, US. And what I'm about to do is to give you a very short introduction. And thereafter, I'll give you a sense of what the panel is about. Education, as they say, is the passport to the future for tomorrow brings to those who prepare for it today. The education that has been brought about in the country is a revolutionary policy of today that will change the face of the country. Today, companies like Google do not insist on a formal education, but focus on skills. There is a message there. The dropout of colleges that we have in India is huge. Again, a message. The more number of students who finish their education and basic degrees such as arts and science and are unemployed, there's a message. The number of unemployed engineers that we have today in India, humongous, again, a message. Then again, the students who complete their education, enter organizations, have to undergo training all over. It's almost like the organizations are waiting for them so that they can again get into another three to six months of schooling, get them ready. There's a message in that as well. For what is sought to be taught at the colleges are inadequate. Again, a message. Those who think that they will do their engineering, their MBAs, which is more like a visa, well, well. And I could go on and on. All that I have said seems like my, this sounds like a doomsday. Not at all. We now have a policy that seeks to find solutions to all of the above in some shape and form. We have great universities in the country. Some of them are represented on the call today. What we need is, can we find a way to get our faculty, to get our universities, to collaborate with the best and the brightest of people in the world, and then bring that kind of education into the, into, the, into the universities and of course, into the country. We now have a policy and therefore, let's try to see what we can do with the state of Telangana that can help to give some kind of tweaks to the policy, find ways, one, to get students as future employers, students, as successful employers, employees in organizations, colleges and universities who will use the policy to bring in the best of education into the country. A great time for us. It will clearly give us an opportunity to have a say in giving the final touches to the implementation. So here is what I suggest that we will do on the panel. The panelists will be given the following questions to focus on. And I'll go through those questions in some random order. I expect that we should have about the panel members to speak no more than about three to four minutes. And the reason is I do expect to have some questions coming in from members of the audience. And at the end of the session, subject to time, we will have a rapid fire questions. So if you're all set, I am here to roll out the very first question. This question goes to Dr. Mahinder Reddy. So, so Dr. Reddy, can you tell us how we can use the national education policy effect of better student success rate at the university? 
Over to you, sir. Um, fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, the National Education Policy 2020, as mentioned by Mr. Nathan, is a commendable step by the government for quality education and having a skillful, talented, and professional youth. Now, the, the main question, the, the, the answers, there are three or four parts I would like to say. Socially, first of all, the foremost important thing is the focus on the socially relevant curriculum. Focus on application oriented and not just theory. That's the crux of the national policy. Not narrow specialization, but broad based, integrated, integrating science and humanities, arts and social sciences, vocational and academic education. Not silos, but liberal education. The second point is student centric delivery. Student is the central person. If the entire set classes should be interactive mode, integration of technology. That's the buzzword which Mr. Nathan has mentioned to improve classroom process. Uh, uh, the third point is emphasis on quality faculty, whatever may be the policy, whether it is 2020 policy or this focus is on the quality of faculty, which is emphasized in this. And so that quality faculty can make our students innovative and creativity. That is the crux of the word, logical thinking creativity and innovation must be brought into the classroom that requires competent faculty to address the students in Telangana state. Uh, th then there is a, there's a balance is required between co-curricular curricular and, uh, 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 and extracurricular activities so that our students become learn life skills to and uh, life skills how to be successful and handle failures. That's extremely important. Number two, balance between intelligent quotient, emotional quotient and spiritual quotient because they must become fine human beings at the end of the uh, education. Uh, then values like tolerance, team spirit, self-confidence and leadership. And greater autonomy to the colleges in Telangana will help to achieve some of these goals. Finally, the, quality, the, the national education policies uh, objective of going to 6% uh, of uh, expenditure of GDP on, higher, on, high, on education is going to help achieve this because quality comes at a cost and that we must spend to achieve that quality. Thank you very much, Mr. Nath. Thank you. And I, I just couldn't uh, help noticing a few things. One is the whole thing is on application oriented. The center of the whole thing is about students, quality of faculty using technology. And I just could go on and on. But more than anything, I could sense a certain enthusiasm in your response. Thank you so much. I'm now going to direct this question to Professor Venkata Ramana, who is the vice chairman of Telangana State Council of Higher Education. Sir. How can the new policy bring in change in higher education? What do you think universities should do to effect a successful program? Thank you, uh, Mr. Nathan. I had initial uh, difficulties to have my camera switched on. But anyway, uh, it's a good beginning. Uh, I'll take off where Professor Mahinda Reddy uh, ended. As a policymaker in the state of Telangana and as a council which um, facilitates the higher education system, the first um, role of the state would be to disaffiliate college, I mean, call, I mean de-link uh, this affiliation system because the NEP talks about um, no affiliated colleges in the next 15 years. If you look at the uh, universities in Telangana or any other state, even Karnataka, you will find that there are almost 700 to 800 colleges which are affiliated to a university, which is not a good sign. The second thing is um, migration of students from one university to another. For example, um, the silos which we have created in the last 40, 50 years are really creating a problem because the cafeteria approach of higher education is not prevalent as it should be. What I mean is that, for example, the NEP talks about um, one year, a certificate. If you pursue two years, a diploma, three years, a degree. So this should be a seamless migration from one university, one course, one faculty, etc. I hope this will be this will be done, and and even at the level at the state level, we are discussing how do we do it. The third thing is once with academic bank of credits, 
the system gets working, how do different universities, because if you look at the university system in India, you have, in a, in a jovial way, I keep saying that there is a caste system in the universities because there is a tier one, which is a plus plus, and there are tier two, tier three. And do you really accept these uh, credits? And if so, what is the mechanism? But the silver lining and the most exciting thing is that in the field of entrepreneurship, typically if a student, for example, in the engineering faculty would like to exit the program after the first year because he wants to pursue some entrepreneurial dream, today it is not possible. But if you have a concept of gap year, I think you know this is going to be a great news for youngsters who want to foray into entrepreneurship and try their hand out and come back to academics and you know, it's like you know designing your own course and so so on and so forth. Thank you, and I think we'll take the questions later on. What a what a wonderful way of putting things across, uh, Professor. I believe a <clears throat> couple of things. One, just not in the migration, but I like the way that you said a person can really sculpt their own learning, even as they are sculpting their careers. And you, you said this so beautifully. Thank you so much for, for doing that. I believe that all of what this policy is seeking to do is to give that flexibility. Be that as it may, let me move on to somebody who will give us a, an insight into what does it mean for organizations. And so let me, let me focus on a question to Ms. Sangeeta Punapa, who is the Associate Vice President Talent Acquisition of SLK software. The new education policy is very foundational in the change it is seeking to bring in. What is the impact on recruitment in the country? What is the fundamental change, if at all, and what is it that is sought to be brought in? How will it affect organizations? So over to you, Ms. Ponapa. Thank you so much, Mr. Nathan. Um, in my views, and ever since I received this invite, I've been, uh, you know, talking to multiple people in the industry. Plus, you know, my own experience as to how we're going to. Ms. Punapa, I can't hear you. You will have to either raise your voice or do something about your microphone, please. Am I audible now? You're slightly audible. Okay. You may have to come closer. Okay. Okay. So, what I was saying uh, is, you know, Ever since I received this invite, I've been, you know, reading up and also talking to multiple my own uh, industry colleagues, plus trying to see how it's going to impact our organization from an IT hiring standpoint. The advantage, Mr. Nathan, and, you know, the rest of them, including we have a student here, uh, you know, always when we go to campus, you know, we have a, a set of percentage that you need to score. We only go to tier one institutes. We do not want to look at anything below tier one. All of that is going to change. And I think it's for the better because, you know, it is going to give a completely open platform for students, uh, you know, coming from different backgrounds, coming and actually showcasing their talent, which means every student has the opportunity to, to you know, uh, showcase what they come with. And that gives us as organizations an opportunity to select students based on their capabilities. We already, you know, we are a tier, uh, you know, we are a mid-sized company. So we have that advantage already. We don't go after, you know, your academics in terms of, you know, you need to be around 80% plus for me to select you. We actually look at aptitude and attitude. So that is going to make it much, much more easier for organizations like us. And for students, especially if you are going to give them a certification based on a one year course or, you know, you want to do a graduation or you're going to do a post graduation, we are basically bringing the education system into the international platform. The world is already doing it. We are just go getting there. And I think it's a fantastic move to make something like this happen. And uh, I'm sure all organizations similar to us, not just in the IT segment, also in the non-IT segment, are going to grab this with open hands. Oh, what a very nice way of putting your points across. And I think you said that very well. What you're saying is there is a there's almost like a level playing field for students Absolutely. and this policy brings about that and so very well said and I think what it will also do is it will it will stop this caste system that has been referred to on this on the on this podium earlier as well and I think yeah. that's very important 
because ultimately it's about talent go ahead absolutely and uh, just to add to it you know just imagine you know if you have the tier 1 institutes offering all kinds of subjects right you are just stuck to you know your typical uh, tier uh, top uh, you know mathematics and your you know, computer science versus a student going into an iit to do a liberal arts course right the students get access and uh, you know uh, imagine having a multi segmented university in your district which is uh, level play second you are allowing international students to come and study in your university what more can you expect out of this it's like you know it's fantastic to be there so ms sangeeta now you said something that really stoked some uh, you know my you know i wanted to be an engineer my dad told me that if you're an engineer you'll be very successful in your life i had all the requisite points and marks i did very i was academically very very good but we were in nagpur my father got moved to chennai and he said i can't afford you there ultimately i did my mathematics did i like mathematics i didn't like mathematics i wanted english they didn't have english in that place and anyway a comedy of things and finally i ended up doing something that i did not like did i do some did i do well of course i did exceedingly well in mathematics personally i believe if you don't get what you like you like what you get true and but but then what happens is there's always this residual feeling in your head i wish that this policy were there when i was a lot younger maybe i could have played around with it i loved english and i wish i could have gone into humanities who knows anyways regardless let me come on to something which is really very important to us today is to get a perspective from our our young students so let me uh, speak to ms pandana the nep is foundational in its change what do students want from universities and colleges do you believe that there is a change that is owed to the new policy do you really believe that this will bring in the change that is being envisaged so that's a question to you ms pandana pandana we can't hear you Spandana, we can't hear you, Spandana. Maybe you got to turn on your mic. Yeah, I could hear some noise. Go ahead. for some reason i'm not able to get ms pandana are you all able to hear sangeeta can you hear her no we can't yes mr dethan yeah. i can hear you i can hear you very clearly no i'm not talking about me we can hear you. i'm i'm asking no, about pandana yeah we can't hear her yeah she can't hear her pandana take another step go ahead uh you could try logging in using your phone so spandana here is what i suggest <laughs> you can either re log in or you can type your answers on the chat box maybe two or three points we will come back to you in in a few minutes so without any loss of time let me again go back to Uh, another question that i'd like to ask dr mahinder reddy yes sir. yes sir what do you think the new education policy will be useful to to be useful to be to useful to establish institutions and universities and how will the change be effective sir uh, sir this is a very important question 
What do we do with the existing universities, existing institutions, established institutions? Exactly. What is lacking, what is, lacking is that the research, and this has been pointed out in the morning session at 10 o'clock, I was here by Mr. Fernand, by Mr. Ashwin Fernandez of QS, and also the professors from Southampton University and Qatar. See, we need to focus on research. We have to have policies to promote research. And we have to policies to see that the faculty publish good quality papers. But because it is that, that research which results in excellence in teaching. And if you want high quality students coming out of Telangana, wow. you, you must now? ensure that the faculty do high quality research. That is number one. Number two, we should abolish as the, as the national education policy 2020 says. Uh, I think be, I'm no. using my phone. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Spandana. Just hold on a minute. Let me let us finish with the question that has been asked to Professor. Uh, sorry, Dr. Reddy. Let him finish. I will come back to you in a moment. The second yeah. point I want to say is there should be there, there should be no silos. The education should be holistic. Uh, you see. You must have a broad base in terms of a balance between social sciences and natural sciences, humanities, uh, uh, arts and sports, so that the students come out as well-rounded personalities. I think that is extremely important. That's what the established institution should do now. The concept of silos is gone. You have to have a balance, the link between natural sciences, social sciences, humanities, uh, and liberal education and arts, you see, because it also suggests multiple entry and multiple exit. That's a great, great opportunity for the students. Uh, and ethics and human and constitutional values in life have to be taught. Uh, and then teachers and faculty are at the heart of the at the heart of the development. And so we need to develop the teachers, whether you send them abroad or how do you do it? That's a different matter that we can discuss it. Students also should get that exposure to an international context by going abroad, spend a semester abroad, uh, and increase. Ultimately, what we want is to have good quality research. And more importantly, what is the impact of that research? See, that is how the Telangana institutions, Telangana universities have to come up. Uh, 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 therefore, outstanding research becomes as a core requisite for, for establishing quality education. Uh, so we need to inculcate research culture, not only among the faculty, but also uh, quality doctoral students, as well as research in undergraduate level, research at the master's level. That will help institutions to improve uh, the quality further. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Professor, uh, Mr. Reddy, uh, Dr. Reddy. I, I, I quite like the way that you spoke about this whole notion of bringing in research. And if you look at the leading universities in the world, they have the best of faculty who, who have deep sense of research embedded in all that they do. Absolutely. Let's, Absolutely. let's come back to Sai Spandana. Spandana, we could hear you. So you got to turn on your, yes. Turn, yeah, there I you go. I am so sorry about the inconvenience. Uh, I have no idea what happened there. Go ahead, Ms. Pandana. All right. Um, can you please repeat the question, if you don't mind? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Any number of times. So the question is, the, the new policy is, is kind of earth-shaking, at least for India. So what do students expect from universities? As a student, what do you expect from university? What do you believe? that you will get out of this new policy. Go ahead. I have to say uh, the new educational policy is actually in the right track. And I am very happy that uh, India has decided to do this. And the state of Telangana is uh, really focusing on the tiniest of the tiniest details to achieve the picture. Um, as a perspective from a student, um, everything that is mentioned in the new education policy is amazing. 
However, uh, I do like to point out the minute details uh, where we really need to focus on the assessments and the real learning that uh, we, uh, we uh, give in the educational system right now. As uh, Dr. Mahinder Reddy sir and uh, Venkat Ramana sir pointed out, we do need the application oriented. However, to motivate students, to motivate us to do the real learning, do learning apart from the textbooks, we need assessments that actually uh, assess your creative thinking and which would bring out your creative mindset and like new ideas that you could apply practically from the conceptual knowledge that you acquire from the textbooks. I think those are the tiny details that the state of Telangana is looking for. And I am really happy to bring in my perspective. Ms. Pandana, thank you so much. Thank you, your, your mic worked. But more importantly, your ideas I am very, very hopeful that they will work as well. Sometimes they say that a, that a voice needs to be heard. The voice of you as a student, just not of hope, but of something which is going to be stellar, is what the state of Telangana is looking up to. So on that note, let me very, very quickly move on to my next question. And if it's OK with you, May I ask you the next question again, Ms. Pandana? This question is, do you really believe that there is a difference between assessment and real learning? Uh, yes, there is. And um, having education in like uh, two different countries, it has helped me understand that both of them actually go hand in hand. And it is really important for a student to have experience or have encouragement in both of them uh there is really um nothing that should be like it's either real learning or the assessments but the assessments that the exams or the quizzes or the projects that you give the students they really need to bring out the real learning and encourage students to read outside the textbooks that i was mentioning in my previous answer and even with the projects, they need to know how to apply the textbook knowledge in the projects that they need to do. I will give an example uh, for one of my master's project because I have not heard, uh, I did do a project in IIT, but we are talking about the affiliated, universe, affiliated colleges in state of Telangana, which do not have these resources or the faculty. Uh, I was, doing a class for composites project and I had to create my own composite egg beater from scratch and make sure and the assessment was I need to beat the eggs and the class was so competitive that we brought out like our own designs and so many designs and how fast it beat the eggs and how many eggs it beats that was the real challenge and that motivated us to look around and go outside the recommended textbooks, do the research from the articles and the current technology that they use in the egg beating market. So we need more things like that in the education. And I think the new education policy is moving towards that where it's more research-based and application-based. And we just need to focus on implementing this. I think one of the nicest thing that you just uh, said was you echoed the point that was said by Dr. Reddy. He talked about this whole thing around application and research. And I think it, it really showed off its true colors in the way that you talked about application oriented. So thank you so much for saying what you did. Let me just uh, move on. And then this is to Ms. Sangeeta. So would you think that the skill-based learning would be sufficient? 
description. I think I lost you. Could you just repeat that question? I think I lost you there. No worries, no worries. So the question was a quick one. It said, would you think that skill-based learning would be sufficient for organizations? Not necessary. Skill-based is good, but not limited. I would think, like what you know, uh, Sandra just mentioned and uh, Reddy just mentioned, right? Uh, it has to be an equal mix. It has to be a blend. Today, I think our education system is a little skewed towards very academic and you know, textbookish knowledge, where students are really good. They know what they are talking, but when it comes to implementing what they learn, that is where they struggle. So, if there is a vocation-based uh, you know, education, which is going to be a part of the current education system, and then you, you know, you kind of balance it out, uh, which is what exactly is missing in our education system today. I think that should take care of this concern. But would that suffice? That alone would not suffice. Was I audible? Got it. Okay. So let me move on to the next question there. So this is to Professor Venkata Ramana. What is the role of faculty, the teacher in the emerging change? And, and what do you think is the big one around the education policy? How can they be change champions? So this is the role of the faculty. So, and this is over to you. Professor Ramana. Thank you, Mr. Nathan. If you look at uh, traditionally the role of a faculty, all of us went to our universities and colleges. The role of a university or a faculty was that was uh, it was looked as like the sage on the stage. And today, if you look at the faculty role, it is more like a guide by the side. We are not just people who are going to deliver monologue lectures. But we are going to co-create knowledge. Essentially, this me this believes that the teaching learning process should be learner-centric. And to do this, we need to work backwards our whole educational pedagogy. That means involving the student, investing in the student, looking at the student issues, and then making them partners in the learning process. This was missing in many of the higher education institutions because we encouraged for a long time learning by both, and the exams were predictable, the teaching was predictable, outcomes were predictable, and the careers were predictable. In this new age and the new normal, you have to think out of box. So faculty have a big role. I would like to also add that we in the state of Telangana are looking at energizing, recharging the faculty, through encouraging them, through supporting them, through research grants, setting up centers of excellence, and doing joint research. That's very important. Lastly, I have a very favorite quote, which my professor used to say, the student of earlier years did not have a choice or voice, but the student of today has a choice and a voice. I'm just taking picking up from what you left. I hope you know I clarify that we need faculty A, who, who are learner-centric, B, plan for the lectures so that, you know, the, to match the pace of the student and the learner. Three, evaluate them in a way which gives them a 360 degree feedback of what their performance was and where their gaps are there. Professor Venkata Ramana, when you are talking about your faculty as sage on the stage, no, no, but guide by your side, yes, yes. I was again taken back to the teachers that we have had. And the ones that we remember the most are the ones who are the guide by your side. Amazing. And I believe that if we focus on getting the best of faculty, bettering them, yeah. um, they, they always say, you know, 
Swadeshe Pujade Raja, which means a person is celebrated in their own king, in their own uh, in in their own kingdom. But Vidwan Sarvatra Pujade, which is a Vidwan, a, a learned person is celebrated anywhere. It's a long quote, I'll keep this short. But back to this bigger question, and this goes to Dr. Reddy. Um, sir, so tell me, what are the successful models that you believe that you would have in the country which, which believes that from a point of view of students, parents, as well as financial institutions lending student loans? So let me repeat this. What are the successful models of return on investment, both from the point of view of students, parents, financial institutions that lend money to students to make sure that they complete something? So what do you think are successful models? Is there anything that we need to be doing now? Dr. Reddy? Am I audible, sir? Uh, just now you are audible. Please carry on. You see, the, uh, the most important aspect of the success of a student in a college or a university is a good placement. You see, what is it that, let me put the question this way, what is it that we should do to see that the students get good placements? Number one, he should be thorough with the fundamentals and the applications in the knowledge. Then there are three C's, communication skills, confidence, and critical thinking. It is not yes or no answers, but the student should be able to justify to the potential employer why he agrees or why he does not agree and why he does not, uh, why, why he uh, agrees, he should give the logical reasoning. So that, that uh, communication skill is important, that confidence and conviction with which he speaks enables them to, uh, to, to get the position. Similarly, critical thinking is important because as uh, someone said, the jobs which are going to uh, come are, uh, in the future are not there now. So how do we prepare? We can't prepare them for all jobs. We make them think critically during the college so that he is prepared for the life, any changes in the job, he adjusts. So the three C's are important, communication skills, confidence in the in their presentations, as well as critical thinking. Now, as Madam Ponapa just now said, greater interaction and interface with the industry, a DICFI foundation for higher education, our university located in Hyderabad. You see, we have every student, whether it is in law or engineering or, or MBA, they spend uh, 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 about 10, 12 weeks in, in a company. That exposure to the real world is important. That hands-on experience is important. That helps them to get a, to get to get good good placements. Now another thing is this is one side you see, where you are trying to improve the supply side, where you are trying to improve the quality of the students so that when the industry comes, they pick them up. The other side, other side is the universities and the colleges should also contact, especially in the COVID situation, the problem is even more serious. The economy, entire economy is affected. So they need to work out which areas are growing, where, where which, which sectors are succeeding and concentrate so that the students uh, get placement. A good placement will mean a higher return on the investment. This is how I would like to answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Eddy. Thank you so much. I mean, you're a man after my heart. I, I honestly believe that the person who does really well is the person who has tested ab initio. When, when we go on to our placement in various places, in 30 minutes, an hour and a half, you will never be able to find out whether the student is the best. And I think Sangeeta said this earlier. Yes. Why go after people who are the best and the brightest academically? But we need to go after the people who are fitness or purpose, the right ones that we need for organizations. For instance, if there's an organization which places a tremendous 
accent on one of the C's that you mentioned, which is communication. The second one that you mentioned is confidence. The third one is about creativity. And if you think that this is an organization that focuses on that, how can you test all that in a short period of time? And therefore, working with organizations, spending time with them, these organizations will be very happy. I mean, we go to campuses all the time as Deloitte, and we pick on a lot of students. Not all of them will make the grade. Not because they are not very bright. It's just because when we get them on the projects, we get them to see whether these are the people that would be successful in, in our kind of work. And in so doing, we'll also impart a lot of skills that are necessary for them so that when they go out, it doesn't mean that everybody gets employed by just one, per, one organization. But when they go out, they carry with them invaluable lessons that they have learned in either the three months or the six months that they have spent with any one organization. So with this, let me move on um, to another question that has been on my mind, and this is to Professor Ramana. So what, what are the suggested changes to be brought around in the areas of academic advising, career counseling, and perhaps even um, tutoring? Any suggested changes? I think, you know, you have asked a question that is very close to my heart. I was the chairman of the Placement Guidance and Bureau, Advisory Bureau. In fact, it used to be called the Placement Officer. So, but uh, when I took over, I asked my president, the vice president, that it should be renamed as the chair, Placement Guidance and Advisory Bureau. So if you look at most of the students who join, and I, I have a long stint at uh, University of Hyderabad, of course, now with the government of Telangana. But uh, if you look at the hand-holding part of the whole learning, teaching learning experience um, is, is missing. And I'm, I'm very um, uh, frank enough to admit that uh, this is a problem area because you do not look at the students' expectations and uh, um, uh, so on, uh, dreams or aspirations so on uh, after the classroom. You see, the role of a teacher is just limited to go to the class and deliver, whereas the role of the administrator is just to run the show. But if you really have student groups group um, projects and faculty who are assigned to our team and be and, and are assigned as a mentor. I think this is a very good initiative. At the University of Hyderabad, we did this. For every faculty, on a random basis, I had to create a small group, which consists of both rural, urban, um, toppers, and the non not so uh, high scoring students. And group projects were highly useful for them. A, to understand the dynamics of the learning environments which are prevalent in the entire country because we are a federal university. We used to get students from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and all that. Two, it is not, it is known thing to all of us, but we, we never acknowledge that everyone is not good at everything. So if we could get the good things out of each of these students, pull it up as a common resource pool and then press, make them present in the classroom. And then probably at some time, the faculty steps in and talks about the areas where they could improve. I'll move to the next uh, career counseling part of it. Um, I have, I, even now I meet many students from the leading institutions. They come to me to, to seek some advice or help. I find that we are somewhere, we are not at all good in that because most of the faculty time is spent on teaching and teaching in the traditional way. Suppose we could combine teaching, tutoring, mentoring, counseling. And we have some slot every week, faculty office hours. For example, I used to insist that every faculty put on the note, put on the door, the faculty, um, what do you call interaction time so that you know a student can walk into your room very, very confidently, seek some answers for his many questions which he had. For example, I was a student in my management in the, in the business college and I didn't business school. I did not have much time from my faculty, except that they would come and teach you and go. So I had to seek industry mentors like you. In my internship, I had a very good mentor who actually counseled me. And, and then I moved to industry. From industry, of course, I came back to academics. So the whole exercise of moving from academics, research, industry, and then to academics made me realize that it is very, very important. If you divide your 
uh, education into three parts. One is the classroom learning, one is the industry orientation, and three is the external environments which you pick up stimuli and the ecosystem in which you're going to work in the future. I hope Professor I answered. Kamala, yeah, yeah, you, you did this. And I am, uh, what can I say? The government of Telangana is, is really fortunate to have somebody like you. And I, I would like to say this to your face. It's very rare for people who work in academics, at least in India, to go to the industry, then spend time and again come back to academia. Because in some way, you're able to get the benefit of both. Get, uh, for example, all that you do in the area of research, if you're able to apply. And if you look at all the speakers today, all of them have spoken about it, the application. We also speak about life skills. So the, the way that you can help to integrate this is fantastic. You spoke about supporting, tutoring, teaching, mentoring. I'll add one, wo one more word, which is sponsoring. Because I believe that in all that you are doing, Professor Ramana, you are also right. sponsoring, whether it is yeah. you or whether this is also uh, people who are on this call, Dr. Reddy, uh, Ms. Ponapa, all of you are doing it for all the spandanas of the world. Because if you, if you sponsor people and tell them that this is, these are the kinds of people we need, I think we will really go places. Today, what is lacking in the industry, however, is just this, that it's almost like these are the bunch of students, go take your pick, instead of saying these are the people who are most suited to organizations. And on that score, let me move again. And then um, this is the next question coming up. And this is for Ms. Sangeeta. Um, what do you think companies need to make NEP a huge success? What do you think companies a, need? Yeah, it's actually a very, very good question. You know, the government has made a huge momentous uh, jump in this field, and it's very, very crucial for companies like us, uh, you know, across the country to adapt and make sure that this is a success. Uh, in many ways, uh, one is when we are talking very specifically about to blend, uh, you know, vocational and academics, that is number one. Number two, where, you know, every university is going to be having multi, uh, you know, uh, multi description or, you know, multi lines of education, uh, you know, uh, how do we make it a success? And that becomes what we need to do, uh, you know, uh, moving away from our typical method of, uh, you know, going into a campus and telling them that, you know, anybody who scored beyond this in this line of function is what we are going to interview, you know, we are going to put them onto an online test. Um, versus what is it that we can do different? We have to tie up to these education institutions, try to find out what is it that we are going to do. Maybe we can sponsor, you know, we can sponsor students, telling them that, you know, right now we are doing internship, but even if you look at the internship, how relevant is that internship? Uh, we do it in bits and pockets. There are companies who do it. There are companies who don't do it. Um, very specific organizations do very good intern programs. And, you know, and the system of credits, uh, especially, which is completely beyond your education. What do you do beyond your academics? Are you studying or, you know, are you getting some practical uh, training, which is very relevant to what you're studying? So all that, we have to kind of, you know, make it fungible and include that in our evaluation of a prospective student if we are going to hire them. Right. It is not going to be about, you know, which study subject you score well. Why did you not score well? Where did you do your intern internship? And ideally, what I have seen is internship versus the topic you're studying are completely yeah. disconnected. You know, um, I come to your, you know, I come to Deloitte. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering student and I'm doing an internship in Deloitte. You know, how is yeah. it going to add value to me as a student? Um, you know, if I'm very smart and I'd actually find something, that's a, a different topic. But having said that, you know, if I am a mechanical student and I want to do some internship, I have to do it with a relevant organization. And when that campus, you know, when that organization comes to campus, that is what I'm going to talk about. But, you know, my passion about mechanical engineering, what did I do? Which organization did I go and do my internship with? That adds value. So it means that every organization like us 
have to tie up with these institutions and make sure students are guided in a particular manner, right? And I don't think it is restricted only to education institutions to make this a success. I think we play a huge role in this. And it benefits, it benefits us most of all. Excellent, excellent. And um, very quickly, on to you, Ms. Pandana. What is the big change that you would like to see in India with a new policy? Uh, you may want to turn on your mic. Thank you. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. OK. Um, I would like to say two things. Number one, uh, like Professor Venkatramanasar pointed out, uh, a review session or a constructive criticism for every assessment that you do or just observing the behavior of the student in the class if the faculty could provide constructive criticism, that is very important. And we do need that rather than just getting our scores back. That would really help the student to improve and develop and practice in the areas that they are weak at. Uh, number two, um, availability of research labs or practical labs where uh, they can put the theory into practice and availability of the lab faculty or even open up any opportunities like internships within the uh, practical lab sessions uh, where the students can go in even in their leisure hours and uh, train on the weaker uh, areas that they are in. Thank you. So um, I know we've just got about seven minutes, but I'm going to try to use this really well. and. Um, in, in a specific order, I'm going to be asking this question. So the order will be like this. Number one, this will go to Dr. Reddy. Second, it will go to Ms. Uh, Sangeeta. The third one to you, Spandana. And the fourth one to Professor Ramana. So the question is this. What is the best advice you would give for this policy to be a success. What is your advice for this policy to be a success? You can pick out anything. It doesn't matter. And and um, the the shorter your response, less than a minute, that would help. Go ahead. Advice I would like to give to the government of India and to the government of Telangana is that policy is excellent, but the but implementation is the most important thing. I think the uh, utmost attention should be given implementation. For example, whether it is internationalization, in internationalization it says that top 100 universities in the, in the world should, will be invited to set up campuses in, uh, uh, in India. Now Telangana should take this as an opportunity and see to it that they bring in some campuses because some campuses to uh, to Hyderabad and Telangana region, so that that exposure to uh, that that will improve competition and also that internationalization helps uh, uh, give better exposure to faculty and students and uh, 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 and helps improve the quality. Thank you, sir. Universities in the world and to Telangana, I, I really love that, preferably Hyderabad. Okay, so uh, let's go on to you, Spandana. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the same question. Um, yeah. I think baby steps, like uh, rather than focusing on the big picture, I think like improving changes like one after the other uh, would really bring it, the new educational policy into a successful platform. Uh, that is all from me. I cannot hear you, Mr. Nathan. You're on mute. Yeah. Okay, the host has unmuted me, so I'm sure you'll be able to listen to me. So, Ms. Panapa, uh, so you tell me, what do you think we should be doing for this policy to be a success? I'll just continue to what Dr. Murali mentioned, uh, Mahindra Reddy mentioned. 
Uh, importantly, implementation is going to be the biggest challenge. Uh, it will be in a phased out manner, and I know it's what they're targeting the next 15 years to make this happen. Having said that, uh, you know, you also mentioned that you, know, you have one caption, uh, which I always uh, believe very strongly in, you know, just do it. I think it's a, a fantastic move. Excellent, excellent. Start at the end. Seize the moment. Fantastic. Love it. Okay, let's move on to Professor Ramana. <clears throat> I think the need of the hour is to work together because um, education is a country in the country and the center should involve more of the faculty process. I'm glad to mention that Telangana State had given many suggestions and some of them were incorporated. Second thing is we need to work with the stakeholders because I strongly believe there are four pillars, the governments, the society, industry, and the students. We need to engage with them more and to talk with them forward. Lastly, the government of Telangana has been in the forefront to invite top universities to Telangana, already the top big five already in Hyderabad. But on the university's front, I'm glad to mention that we have already signed with the University of Pittsburgh to set up a center of, a center of innovation last year. And I hope this policy would get many of the Harvard and the Stanford of the world to set up educational hubs in Telangana. I cannot um, uh, give out the names now, but already we have five or six top international universities writing to us. Already they have written that they would like to set up uh, campuses here and, and start some programs and research activities with the help of the government of Telangana. And Professor I must mention last that Telangana government is the most proactive and the most fastest growing state in the country. Thank you. I think I'll be over telling if I say much. <laughs> no, no, you, you really touched, uh, you want my cockles of my heart because I can tell you, I'm a Tamilian born in Calcutta, lived in Nagpur, Bangalore, Bombay, Bihar. But um, as I say, Dil hai Hindustani ne, Dil hai Hyderabadi. So you, I've been here in Hyderabad for over 15 years. Anything that happens here is the best. I, I really found this of enormous value. This whole morning has been great essay in, in, um, in getting the best out of this particular panel. It had a person who has industry experience, who's currently in the government, who has academic knowledge, the person who's able to blend both, a, a leading person like Dr. Reddy, who is thinking out of the box, trying to get the world's best education into the, just not the city, but also into the country. So Dr. Reddy, thank you so much for what you do. You have no idea that the number of students that you have produced in your university are the best of the best. First, we're very grateful because Deloitte has, has got a number of them. Many of them are doing exceedingly well. Thank you. Uh, Sajita Panapa, thank you so much. You know, you bring in the, 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 the subtle aspects of what one should be really doing when you're bringing in students. The democratization of education, the democratization of bringing in people. Because today, if you can get people working at the homes, you're also making a statement that it doesn't matter whether the person is sitting out here or in Malagonda, they can still be as as productive as working out here, whether this is Guntur, Vijayawada, or any other part of, of uh, the state of Telangana, doesn't really matter. What matters is the, the quality that we manage to bring in. Last but not the least, we all spoke very eloquently about what we should do to make it a success. I have nothing more to offer other than a big, warm thank you. Thank you so much. You really brought a lot of life into this discussion. On that note, thank you. It must be pretty late for you, Ms. Spandana. Uh, a real special thanks to you. No, thank you very much. It was a wonderful opportunity. Uh, that, uh, and I am really happy to share my thoughts on this. And I really uh, wish good luck to the state of Telangana that they improve this. And I hope I can get back and my kids can actually study in one of the world's best educational institutions. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you to the organizers. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.